Welcome you beautiful people to an amazing game here between Samarek as the Red Grand Cathay going up against the Blue Grand Cathay as Rice. Now we're going to be playing on the Darkland Mountain for a brilliant land battle. We're going to be having two very different builds here coming from both sides. One's going to be certainly more of a push and the other more of a hold. But we are going to have squadrons here coming from the blue and rice. We are going to have the double jade warriors on the left backed up by the double jade warrior shield crossbows. And then one of the Wuxing war compass. So the bad boy here today is of course going to have the nexus of element winds. As well as bringing the mastery of element winds here to the battlefield. And the double spells of the comet and the lightning. In the middle, we are going to have another squadron of the Jade Warrior Halberds backed up by the fearsome Fire Rain Rockets, led by the good old Oxes of old. These bad boys known for melee combat, but they are going to have 850 missile strength and uh, 360 devastating range. Over on the right-hand side, we are going to have the Lord Choice of Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. She's going to be crackling as moving here across the battlefield. She's going to be having the Power of Yin, the Arcane Conduit, as well as the Disdain of the Dragon. We're also going to have extra of the Mastery of Element Winds on the battlefield. And it looks like we are going to be having the Talents of the Knight and Regrowth as the spells. The ability here, the Transformation of the Dragon and the Wrath of the Storm. So the third and final here of the squadrons, we are going to have Triple Jade Warrior Shields at the front. Backed up by the Celestial Dragon Crossbows, a unit of the Jade Warrior Crossbow Shields and then more of the Celestial Dragon Crossbows. So we are going to have good AP from range here in the backside. For the main force going to be holding together, we are going to be having, you can see the lovely green coming out here from the Jade Warriors. Uh, Mass Jade Warrior front line, five in total, Peasant Long Spearman in the back, and then we are going to have Grand Cannons. We are going to have some more Jade Warrior shields in the pocket, and the Lord Choice. Uh, let's actually know, we're going to have a little bit of a Vanguard deployment here over on the left hand side. Double of the Peasant Long Spearman going to be hiding in the trees, playing a rather sneaky one indeed. Now, can't quite see the Lord Choice. That's the Lord Choice is going to be in front in the trees. A little bit of a risky one here. Let's look on horseback. We are going to have the Lord of Yin. So the Lord of Yin here is going to be having the Jade Amulet as well as the Arcane Conduit. Will of the Dragons and then also the Power of Yin. The spell is going to be the Ancestral Warriors. Really like that spell. Very good indeed. With also the Talons of Night and the Storm of Shadows. We are also going to bring the Scales of the Celestial Court. Very nice spell here up against the regular Human Force. So we do see a spread of the Fire Rain Rocket coming across. I don't know how it's to deal with the Grand Cannon, let alone two, uh, we could be getting out sniped here. Now, the three squadrons are going to be a little bit unfortunate coming from Rice. We do see, oh, look at this in the back as well. Look at the sneaky play. We are going to get a Talons and Knight in the back. I don't know if we're going to see this. Oh, no. So much good damage in the backside. The Jade Warrior Halberds and the crew here of the Fire Rain Rock is going to be getting decimated in the middle. Look at the damage. Jesus. Going to be down here to about... You know, about a third HP. They are going to break. Somehow they got some extra health there. I don't quite know how that works. But uh, yeah, we're going to be just destroying the artillery piece. We're just going to be forcing the build here to come forward. And it's going to be in chunks. So we get a side on charge here. We do see the legendary peasant horseman going to be charging down. These brave warriors going to be getting in there. And they're going to be fighting here up against these celestial dragon crossbows. Now they do have 95 armor. They don't really have much protection there up against that charge of the peasant horseman. But they'll fight up the champions of old. You know, the dragon crossbows. You know, they come there with the name. Uh, so they will be fighting like... Um, you know, pure champions. We keep that cycle charge. We'll love to see one come in the front and the other one get for the rear charge and get a bit of a hammer and anvil tactic. Especially affecting that leadership and melee defense could be quite strong. But we do see the sword and shield jade warriors coming across. They're going to do some good devastating damage. In the middle, the jade warriors, they're going to be looking rather unhealthy. They're going to be down to 2,900, getting charged down here by a rather healthier contingent of jade warriors. And uh, here, looking good so far, coming from Samarek in the black. Now in the back here, we are going to have the Dragon Blood Lord fighting here. Up against Miao Ying, Storm of the Shadows here, meaning we are going to be slowing her in the pocket. And she's going to be fighting up against the old Oxes. And these bad boys, you know, they're known for combat. Get them in and amongst Miao Ying, and they'll certainly show her the ways of old. But we do see the Pestle Long Spearman fighting in the pocket. These brave warriors, these cheap, cheap, just mass on hand warriors going to be fighting against Miao Ying. And my god, they do not stand a chance. Talons of the Knight in the pocket here going to be catching quite a few units of the Jade Warriors in the middle and also some of the crossbows. You've got to be careful. Quite a few units overlapping here. Do you quite see that with, you know, a few new players here in the community. Same here. We are going to have the Double Jade Warriors. Find up against one. The other one here from uh, Rice is going to be rather injured. So probably not going to win there too much. But we are going to get the back. We are going to compromise these Celestial Dragon crossbows. They do have shields. They do have 95 armor. But they have been destroyed rather quickly here by just mass crossbow bolts. 
Over in the battle, we are going to see the Fire Rain Rocket. It could come back here. We do have Peasant Horseman. Probably have one there to chase it off, and they'll probably clear out the j Crossbows and the Celestial Dragon. But the uh, third contingent coming around here on the right-hand flank, we are going to need something here to deal with that. It looks like we are going to have a well-timed spell of the Talents of the Knights. I don't think we've seen this here with Rice. And there we go. We are going to be caught in the middle of it as we walk through there with the j Crossbows, and they are not having a good time. They're going to be getting whipped to shreds here in the middle. Talents of the Knight is a fantastic armor-piercing spell that's just shredded a unit within an inch of its life. 75% health down there, not looking good for this uh, right-hand flank maneuver. In the middle, we are going to be getting a fantastic fight in the middle here between the, the Shugugan Lord of Yin going up against Miao Ying. And it's like Peasant Longspin here also going to be fighting, just going to be dragging down Miao with just mass, mass chaff in the back. It looks like the dragons here on top of the Grand Cannon are going to be pulling it away, trying to get it away from the majority of the battle. We don't have crossbows firing into the middle. We don't have a bunch of Jade Warrior Halberds in the back. Jade Warrior is also going to be holding off the Celestial Dragons as they fire here into the Jade Warrior crossbows. Really good AP, but of course the shields will negate a lot of the incoming missiles. Grand Cannon is going to be firing to the back up against the third contingent. And it looks like here they're going to be doing some pretty damn good damage. We do get a summon here of the Ancestral Warriors. They're going to be crackling as they are going to be the blessed storm of old. As they do charge here headlong with armor piercing up against the Jade Warrior shields. The crossbows here sadly just don't have the melee prowess here to deal with the legendary characters that uh, come with magic. Uh, Anti-large and armor piercing. Also, they have 75% physical resistance, which, uh, you know, the j World Crossbows only have physical resistance, so it's not looking good there for them. Really good summon, good push out there of the ranged tools coming from Samurai. Really, really nice work. We do shatter the Celestial Dragon Crossbows in the back and also the j Warrior Crossbows. Break the Fire Rain Rocket for the second time. Really good clear up at the back here with the Fast Peasant Horseman. 90 speed, really cheap just to clear up the pack side. It's just excellent work there coming from the fantastic land battle player. In the middle, the Jade Warriors, fighting against Jade Warriors. These ones here do have the Triple Silver Chevron. So they will be getting bolstered on the leadership and melee attacks. They're going to do rather good work here at the front. Bolstered by also crossbows on top of the hill and some grand cannons. And it's like here with some Jade Warrior Halberds fighting up against the Sword and Shield Infantry of the Jade Warriors. Pretty good there for the Jade Warrior Halberds, but they're going to be fighting uphill. Plus these boys are going to be just a little bit tankier. In the backside, they're like going to be charging down the uh, Elite Crossbows. Just you know, against a good thumb, disrupting the formation, preventing them from shooting. And that charge there should be enough. A bit of a flank charge as well. Should be enough to break the Dragon Crossbows. And that's pretty much going to be it. But Balance of Power is rather even. I think there maybe because Miao Ying is going to be in the middle. She's looking rather healthy. And we are going to get some really, really good hit. Oh my god! 360 no scope right in the face up against Miao Ying. Those Grand Cannons just firing point blank. I mean, it's Miao Ying, and she took that like an absolute champion. I believe she was trying to summon here on top of the Jade Warrior crossbows. Uh, looks like maybe going to turn to the knight there in the background. Looks like it was uh, cancelled. Don't know quite know why, but we are going to get the Storm of the Shadow, slowing it down, but we need something here to pin her in place and take care of her. We're starting to lose some elements on the battlefield that can do that. But keeping crossbows nice and close here to the Peasant Long Spearman, giving them those harmony buffs. There's going to be nine leadership, nine melee defense, which is pretty good here up against the Wujing War Compass. In the middle, we are going to get the Lord Choice, who's kind of whittling down the Jade Warriors here. We do have some Sword and Shield of Black and some Peasant Long Swim, just ready to go here. I really like the fact that Samurai has kept this force nice and close together, but this here could be a spell and a half. Catching two units, and yeah, that's going to do a lot of damage. That's probably going to break here the crossbows, and uh, we'll do an absolute number on the Peasant Long Swim, and they're just, uh, the base weapon damage and armor piercing is going to shred through. Look at the damage! My god, two units going to be breaking there. Didn't actually affect too much of the Jade Warriors either. Really good spell coming out of Rice. Really pulling this game back to even. So Bounce Power is even. Getting in the back here, compromising the Grand Cannon. Leadership is really low, despite being incredibly healthy. We need to get something in the back here to really help. Maybe get some mass of the Cavalry. I know they're cleaning up the backside, but maybe just pinning in Miao Yang could be the way forward here. If we get the Grand Cannons back online. Grand Cannon Crew is going to be running away. We do have Peasant Long Spearman in the backside. Really want to get some of these crossbows firing into Miao Ying. That's going to be the main way to take it down. Now, she does have missile resistance and then also spell resistance. But we are going to be having the Storm of the Shadows there to slow her down. That's probably the best way. Slow her down, just kind of ignore her and deal with the rest of the force and then try and see if you can bring her down at the end. J Borrow crossbows with the shields. Uh, they're going to be just shooting in. Actually, just get the Lord Choice, charge them in, compromise them, and just prevent them from shooting. But we are going to be taking down quite a few elements of the build. Seven minutes into the game. A bit of a macro look here on the battlefield. Uh, most of the battling is going to be happening on the right hand side. Quite a few units breaking on the periphery. We do see Peasant Horseman. They can chase off some of the Jade Warriors. Make sure they shatter and uh, you know, do some good work there in the backside. Halberds here, they have managed to pull down a lot of the Jade Warriors with them, but they are going to be losing in combat. And we can see here the Jade Warriors with the Triple Silver Chevron. Going to be doing quite well. Uh, Jade Warrior crossbows with shields. They're going to be running out of ammunition, so they're going to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And we are actually going to get the Wuxing War Compass coming across. I don't know how many of those spells we're going to be having left 
It looks like zero and zero. So it's just going to be uh, the oxes on the front fighting with 160 weapon strength, which is uh, you know absolutely absurd when you really think about it. The peasant, uh, peasant horseman here going to be charging and finishing off the halberd. So really, really nice stuff there on the backside. Shattering with the jade warriors. Uh, it looks like in the back there, so we had some more of these celestial dragon crossbows, but they're going to be negative some leadership, only 170 HP. But we do get a return here in the Fire Rain Rocket. There is one, it looks like one Fire Rain Rocket is going to be online. Now, could this be an absolute play, potentially? And it looks like it's going to be some good spotting there coming from right. So we get that back online, maybe, just maybe, we can turn around this fight. Bands of Power, looks like that's going to be pulling here into Rice's favour. It's a really, really close game, but we are going to be clearing up the backside. I don't think I agree with Bands of Power here. Now, the Lord of Yin is going to be looking pretty low. 3,200 HP, not looking great. Uh, we do see Miao Yang. I don't know what sort of healing we've got left for her. I don't know where we can find... But she's going to be up to 535 kills. That is absolute absurdity there from the Lord Choice. She might single-handedly carry this game, I'm really not too sure. But we do see here Peasant Long Spearman and Jade Warrior Crossbows. They are going to get pushed off the edge of the map. Really good stuff there coming out of Rice. And, uh, you know, we're going to be eight and a half minutes into the game so far. And both players really utilizing every tool uh, in their toolbox. We are going to see Jade Warrior Crossbows returning. Really want to keep this close by. Even if they don't have ammunition, they are actually going to be giving the bolster there to the Harmony. So we are going to be getting... Uh, you know, you can see plus six, plus six there, which is really quite handy over time. Plus, if you have the Lord Choice, you are going to get a Harmony Amplifier, which is going to be 50%, so that will actually, you know, go up to 9-9, nine, nine, which actually makes a huge difference. Peasant Horsemen, they're going to be charged around the back. I don't know if there's still Bug or not, if we can actually... Oh, no, there's a pe few Peasant Horsemen <laughs> caught here on the artillery piece. I don't know if it's still Buggy, if we, maybe we can't get the Fire Rain Rocket crew back on the artillery piece. I don't know if that's still a thing. Maybe you guys can leave a comment down below. Let's have me do Shatter there with the Fire Rain Rocket. Really good stuff. That's going to be the third break, the final break, so they will Shatter here off the edge of the battlefield. It looks like the Wujing World Compass has seen the end of its days, and it looks like it's pretty much going to be Miao Ying versus the world. I don't think there's going to be anything left here online. We do Shatter there with the Jade Warriors. Uh, Jade Warrior Crossbow is going to be falling, and in the backside there, some more Jade Warriors. They haven't shattered, but negative six leadership, and we are going to be having 240 HP. Lord Choice is going to be getting in and around, probably chase off the Wujing War Compass there. We're going to slow it down, and you just get the Lord Choice in there. Mass Weapon Strength to venture off rather quickly. So Miao Yang is going to be coming back. Wouldn't mind seeing her in dragon form. Getting some of that terror on the battlefield up against all these cheap units is rather handy. Of course, if you do kill the Lord Choice as well, negative 16 leadership does go a long way. So we get a bit of a skip on here. Uh, we do see the Peasant Horseman kind of clearing up in the backside. Really quite like that. Uh, just getting as many kills as possible. Just, you know, wiping quite a few units off the battlefield. Really affecting balance of power. And still, the game really fancies Miao Ying here to take the victory. So, this time we're going to be sending certain units in. We are going to have the Peasant Long Spearman. I want to keep some of the Jade Warriors nice and close, but not too close. They're going to break Miao Ying. Uh, it looks like we are going to get the Storm of the Shadows there on top of her, which is also going to get a reduction on armor. Peasant Long Spearman. Going to suffer here. Miao Ying is going to be an uh, infantry side. It's going to be cycle charging with the Dragon Blooded Lord, but uh, really don't want to take too much damage there with the Dragon Blooded Lord. So, we're going to have a good look in here. We are going to be. Oh, look at that crackle of lightning, but she comes in with a 360 punch to the face and look at this this is going to be um you know some sort of you know all sorts of elements of winds here fighting you're going to be seeing some earth some air some fire bending all sorts of uh, glorious combat here in the middle with the golden horse but really do not want to lose the lord choice here in the middle she's going to be fighting oh my god this is absolutely fantastic we do get out the lord choice we do see just peasant spearmen flying everywhere which is uh, really quite unfortunate but she's going to be down here to 7,090. The Lord Choice getting a downhill cycle charge. Uh, sadly, wasn't unfortunately connecting there, but immune to psychology plus 24 mil attack is going to be huge there for Miao Ying. So, we do get out nice stuff there for the Lord Choice. Uh, Miao Ying can chase, uh, that is within the rules. We definitely want to get a few more units coming forward. We don't actually have any ammunition left. Uh, but it looks like we are going to be taking our time here to take down the Lord Choice. And we will do chip damage every time. We are going to cycle charge. We want to be careful that we don't get trapped amongst our own troops and take too much unnecessary damage. Oh, the Ancestral Warriors! And there we go. Meow Ying goes into storm form. And looks like he's going to be like just come around the battlefield. So really, really good. We're going to use the dragon form here to get away from the summon of the Ancestral Warriors. It was really nicely timed. But it looks like here the dragon is going to get away. We are going to get a slow there for the dragon. It is going to be fighting on the floor. I don't know if this counts as flying or not. Because, of course, it's going to be the only unit left on the battlefield. It looks like over here we are going to have some units on. When they go off, maybe, just maybe, it might affect on army losses here. I don't know if Miao Ying does count as flying here. Because, of course, technically she can get away from combat. 
Now we do see the orange crackles here going on the top, which means that the summon is going to be desummoning here. It's not going to live much longer. It's going to try and get in as quickly as possible to fight up against me. Yang, but it needs to run away just as quickly as possible. Don't get involved here with the ancestral warriors. We are going to have magic damage, which will circumvent. Um, uh, it's actually no physical resistance. I thought Miyagi had physical resistance. Turns out she doesn't. But uh, what Miyagi needs to do here is maybe try. And there we go. Units with on the ground. So she doesn't count as a ground unit, which is uh, quite interesting. So she will be taking leadership penalties here. So she's going to be at 94. I don't know if actually fighting in combat on the floor counts. Uh, it looks like it is going to be counting. Or it's maybe ticking down here. Uh, yeah, it needs to land. So she's probably pretty soon going to have to transform back into human form. Uh, yeah, what's this going to be? This is going to be a slow as it tries to catch up against the Grand Cannon Cruise. Balance of power is spot on even. This game has been a really tight one. She's going to be fighting in the middle. Uh, this is going to get really close here on the leadership. She's going to be down to... No, it looks like she's going to be fine, but again, it attack to the rear, negative 14, uh, negative 7 there as well for damage sustained. Uh, yeah, it looks like she fights away, not a medic. Oh my god, we break the Lord Choice! Oh my god, that is so huge. So the Lord is going to be breaking here. The Lord of Yin needs to come back. If this thing breaks, uh, that's going to be really unfortunate. It's going to be negative 16 leadership. Terra will win the game here, and Miao Ying will be known as... The Lord of All. The Lord of All would have single-handedly won the game here. Just cycle charging through, causing that terror. I'm really surprised that army losses haven't been kicked through here from flying. But it's not the Lord Choice is going to return. And maybe, just maybe, we can get the chip damage. 4,500 is an incredibly close game here. The Lord Shatters! No, that is so unfortunate. I don't know why that happened. Uh, the Lord Choice, why did it shatter? Uh, and so it's got four leadership. Damage sustained, negative uh, 74, negative 1. But it's inspired. I don't know. I don't know why that shattered. I have no idea. That's that's really unfortunate. But it's not the Lord Choice here. It's going to be just you know, pushing through the units. You want to keep some here on the periphery. Uh, we are going to see there some Harmony buffs. So we are going to get Leadership buffs. The Balance of Power is really, really favoring here. Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. But she's going to be going down pretty low here. It's going to keep looking at her. 2,700. Uh, it's not looking fantastic. Uh, it's going to be 2,400, but we are going to be breaking, and that's going to be army losses, GG's, and well played to Rice, with a fantastic game here with Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. Dear God, ladies and gentlemen, you couldn't ask for a closer mirror match between both of these fantastic players, really coming through the ranks here, and uh, the Lord of Yin, what a performance, 60 kills, 2,450 damage value, you must say, well and truly outperforming itself. 850, 800 there for the Grand Cannons, with 700, 1,100 there for the J-Boro Crossbows, 440, and 670. So the triple chevron there on the silver chevron for the Sword and Shield Jade Warriors, 28, 120, 150, with 500, and 600 there. So very good stuff, with 500 and 860 for the Peasant Horsemen, really, really good value. 408, 540, 115, 83, and 130 there for the Peasant Long Spearman. Now, Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, 817 kills, ladies and gentlemen. You heard that right. You saw it. 6,000 damage value. Jesus Christ, what was that? That's going to be half the damage value solely on Miao Ying. Now, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the performance if you ever saw one. We are going to see 350 for the Fire Rain Rocket, 940 and 300 for the Celestial Dragon Crossbows with 650 for the Wuxing War Compass, 230, 820, and 170 for the Crossbow Shields. 260 for the J Warrior Halberds, with 150, 260, 150, 400, and 300 there for the J Warriors, which, you know, slightly underperformed here of the Triple Chevron. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please smash that like button. Feel free to comment down below with all your thoughts and opinions, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does make a massive difference. So, I've been your boy Logic. Take care of yourselves, and I'll be seeing you all very, very soon.